Well, hello everybody. My name is Christopher Now Welcome. Guys, welcome to the Dirty Nerdy Show. Holy crap. All right, nobody freak out. I'm not freaking out. Why are you freaking out? Shut up, Chris. All right, everything is fine. Okay, listen. All right, all right. So, here's the deal, you guys. I don't know how this happened. I was just on the internet doing what I do. You know what I do. I just browse and tweet a bunch of nonsense all day. That is what I do, okay? And then I was talking to FamCam. And FamCam was like, you should get ASMR Kitten on the show. And I was like, no, nah, she's famous and scary. I don't wanna. And then he was like, do it, or I will do it. And I was like, sir, that is a very good point. I will go talk to her. And then I did, and she is the nicest person on the freaking planet. Oh my god. So, guys, listen. When I say OG, I don't mean like, oh, she been here for a few years. That's cute. No, this girl been here since this shit was called the Whisper Community, okay? This girl laid the groundwork for what we do today. There would be no GB. There would be no Maddie Tingles. There would be no Seafoam Kitten. There would be no Heather Effect. There would be no 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 big names out there right now. Um, if it weren't for people like today's guest, who all these years laid out the blueprint. She's essentially Jay Z. So I want to give a nice TDNS welcome to the Jay-Z of ASMR, ASMR Kitten. What's up, Caitlin? Well, I've never been called Jay-Z before. <laughs> there you go, right there. <laughs> Gave out the blueprint. How you like that? Was that a good one? <laughs> was, I'm a little shook. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Yeah, man. I had to tell the story, and then I had to dive right into the intro. It took a minute, but we got there. <clears throat> yeah. So, let's dive right into this. It's six years ago. You're, <laughs> you're, 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 you're watching the ASMR. Who are you watching at this point, six years ago? Oh, I was watching Queen of Serene. I, st I still watch her all the time. But there was another YouTuber who doesn't even make ASMR anymore, and her name was Sarah Labrie, L-A capital B-R-I-E. The tattoo lady? Tattoo lady. Oh, dude, I remember her. She would do like, oh. hypnosis and, oh, dude, she yep. cool. So I was watching her and Queen of Serene, and that was, and, and Maria, but I feel like Maria was almost one of the only other ASM artists. So it was like, there was like three to choose from. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was those three. So what, what made you want to dive in and, and, and be a part of that? I always wanted to be like creative. And um, the reason I joined was I was 17. I had just graduated high school and I, it was the summer between going to like college, but I wasn't going. So I had nothing to do, no creative outlet. And I was super depressed. So I was like, well, and I, I really like ASMR. So like, let's have some fun and see where it goes. And I wasn't expecting it to be more than like a side project. And now it's like a, it's a main project. It's just like what I do. <laughs> it's a business, man. Pretty much. Yeah, that's 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 super cool. Um, do you remember the feeling of uploading? Because I what I what I want to do is is I want to show the creators that are new, right? That it's the same for everybody. Um, yeah. um, what was it like that first upload? 
getting that first sort of like comment not the first weird comment because fuck that but like i'll remember our first weird comment (laughs) (laughs) The (laughs) the first comment that made you go like oh my god I mean, I, I think the first like upload and getting like that, like, oh, like, welcome to like YouTube or like that, like, hey, just found your channel, like, super cool that you're doing this. Like, it's such a surreal feeling. You're like somebody somewhere on this planet watched something that I created. Like, and it's it's a very cool feeling. But again, it's extremely surreal thinking that people are watching what you created and your your craft and your art. Yeah, it's super duper weird. Like it's it's a weird feeling. Like um the other day I got my very first fan art. <sighs> Bro, I cried. Oh. I, oh my gosh, I would too. Like I was like I was like I am feeling I am I'm really good friends with Seafoam Kitten. I I hit her up immediately. I was like, Nora, I am feeling emotions right now. <laughs> It's so, it's so just, somebody takes the time to, like, do something because of stuff that you make. Uh, It's the greatest feeling in the world. Uh, It is. It really is. What are some of the triggers that you miss that people don't do anymore? Um, I like the non-realistic scalp massage, if that makes sense. Like, I always used tissue paper. Yes. So I always use like tissue paper behind the camera and like now a lot of people do is like just like an actual like mannequin head with a wig on, which is totally fine. Totally fine. It, it totally works and it gets across that this is a scalp massage. But I really liked that like ooh, like that's totally not hair and that's totally not what like a scalp massage really feels like. It's like an exacerbated uh scalp massage sound. Yeah, you know what I miss? I I don't know if you remember, but there was this girl named Whisper Cutie, right? That sounds super familiar. Uh, And she had, like, the potato camera, because this was back Mm -hmm. in the day. Everybody had the potato camera. Like, there was no 3DO back then, guys. (laughs) Um, And she would just take a pillow, put it behind the camera, and it was a shoulder massage and yeah. that was one of my favorite things ever i because i have a lot of back pain because of my disability mm. and i would listen to those and i would just like my brain would be like this is actually happening to you and yeah. it would be one of the few things that actually got me to sleep when i was you know like in a shit ton of pain this is long before i discovered weed by the way so like <laughs> to add to that there was um a couple artists and i'm having a hard time remembering some names but um there were channels where they do the exact same thing like you're saying but they lay the pillow down and have like a top-down perspective and they'd give a massage to the pillow and it was like they'd be on like a massage table so it would be like they're at the neck and like then they'd move down like towards like the lower half of like the body and like towards like the legs and those videos were amazing as well yeah that was the that i remember specifically somebody that did that it was this skinny redhead lady uh what was her name oh my god uh, she, i i have it and i can't remember it if i went through my subscriptions i could totally find it she doesn't do videos anymore uh, i'm our nova star I, I remember i remember people were like super mean to her um but oh my god she was so good so so good um if there was an artist from back in the day that you wish would come back who would it be gosh um so there was one her name is sweet seductive asmr she was a redhead from i don't know the country but it was she had like a almost like an eastern european accent not russian about that's exactly who I'm talking about. I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I typed in pillow massage ASMR on YouTube, and there's a couple that came up, but she was one of them. You're correct. So that's, yeah. Oh, I loved her videos. She was oh. so good. Oh, so, like, I, I've never heard an accent like it. 
yeah, I don't hear an accent like it again. I don't know where she was from, man. Uh, it was some Eastern European. It sounded a little Canadian. And oh my gosh, her, her accent was beautiful. Her videos still hold up to this day, which is saying something because again, like you said, potato phone, no microphone, maybe like a, you know, a clip on mic on the t-shirt kind of thing, but no like 3D, like you said. Yeah, those were the days when, like, like those early days, what were those like? Do you think it was more creative back then before we had all of the the shiny equipment i want to say yes in the sense of you were able to create a scenario without having to worry what the background looked like like half of my original videos were done in my childhood bedroom yeah well it's a bedroom and there's a lot of them where like the room is disgustingly messy and people are like girl you need to clean your room and i'm like listen like i'm i'm a teenager like i'm a child i'm a baby like don't tell me what to do because i'm not gonna do it <laughs> but now it's like i'm like your background has to be like perfectly lit like no extra lights like no nothing you can't have a pillow out of place because people are like you know i was trying to fall asleep but there's like one little thing that's bothering me there's a lump in the blanket and you're like who the fuck even noticed the lump in the blanket yeah i feel like the creativity has shifted and i feel like you were allowed to have a little bit more uh freedom in the making of your videos five six years ago now it's a little like we need a cookie cutter asmr channel yeah i i i see a lot of people who are starting up nowadays and right out the gate they're like i need to get the 3do and i'm like no you don't <laughs> i i still don't have the 3do the microphone we're talking to right now is the first yeti i ever bought i've never bought another yeti and i want to buy another one because i want the bluetooth one but that's because i'm selfish <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you, you don't need the whole and, and believe me th those setups are amazing and i yeah. love those but like the original stuff was just as good so when what was your favorite video that you that you did early days um looking back on like my channel like i definitely loved the let me uh, asmr you video and it happens to be my most watched video which i think is super cool but it was one of those videos where i really loved the um let me asmr you style videos that people were coming out with like i i tagged cute bunny you in my description and i believe it was maria because they uh, gentle whispering because both of them had done videos similarly <laughs> So I was inspired by those, and um, I, I, it's such a interesting take on ASMR. Yeah. Yeah, I just really love like how that video came out, even if it is seven years old. I miss the community tag videos. There used to be a lot more of those. There was, yeah. I start. I, I don't want to say I started one. I got it off of like Tumblr, but like I like was like I'm gonna do this, and then I started tagging people, and we we kind of generated one, which was super fun. I do miss those a lot. I, I I think those really helped facilitate the growth in the community. Um, um. what are some of the positives and pros? And, we're gonna we're gonna do pros and cons right now on the Dirty Nerdy <laughs> Show positives and negatives of the growth and how it's grown as a whole so positive i definitely love how has the media has looked differently at the community of asmr the question like gb just had an interview this past week and was discussing how like the question is asmr sexual gets asked a lot less now which it's true a lot of people their first reaction isn't this is sexual or this is turning me on or like why am i feeling this way it's like a, oh i totally understand what this is about um so that's a pro in my opinion a con however is a lot of people i don't know any of these channels i don't subscribe to people like that who are just making asmr for money who are like I'm going to, you know, do the whole 3DO, spend $500, and just make content for money. Yeah. I understand. I understand. We all have to make our money one way. I'm not going to disrespect the hustle. Yeah. Now, when people 
what ASMR is and aren't like, you know, aren't understanding like this isn't for money. Like I don't have a channel for profit. I have a channel because I like doing this. And if I make an extra hundred dollars a month off of it, great. And if I don't, whatever, I don't, this isn't my source of income where people are like, this is the only way I make money. I need more. I need more subscribers, more equipment. And you're like, slow down, enjoy what ASMR is, enjoy who we are and why we do this and not because none of us do it just for the money yeah man um i was i was on a twitch stream yesterday right and it was asmr mm -hmm. stream. i'm not gonna name this person because that would be uncouth um uh, but they had like a hundred people in there right mm -hmm. and and this person basically complained that they were bummed out that they didn't have like 500 people in there at the time because they usually have like 500 people and I'm like you have the opportunity right now to like make a hundred people like have a better day like oh. that's so much more important oh. I agree and it's like there it, it, it is discouraging when you do upload a video say like youtube uh, with live streaming like i don't think i'm necessarily there yet to have more than like 10 people which again totally fine it, it definitely is discouraging when you're like oh i thought this video was going to do better but then you think like well is it me is it the content is it the algorithm is it something out of my control and you got to kind of look at it that way and that's how i look at my last video that i uploaded i believe it got under a thousand views and i put it's like a 40 minute video and i put in like an hour and a half of work into it and i'm like why didn't it get a thousand views but it's one of those things like i can't change that and i can't control that it got only a thousand views in two like under a thousand views in two weeks like i'm lucky i got those 900 views yeah i i'm at the point now where i don't look at any of the analytics like i just i just don't i don't yeah. care <laughs> I, it's it's very toxic yeah and it can it can make you sad uh, yeah, definitely so i don't i don't even look at it if i if i get a video that's doing like a hundred views cool like, uh. <laughs> uh if it does under that also cool don't care <laughs> at least someone watched it yeah i think um I think using the uh, the premiere feature actually helps a lot. Uh, so too, especially with that initial bump, because like from what I was told, like what really matters is that first you know like couple hours. <laughs> um, so as long as like that is is you know you're getting some views during that, then that's cool, man. Mm -hmm. And if you use that premiere, like people feel obligated to stay. So <laughs> I agree. Um, what is uh, your favorite video that you've done recently? There's two. I'll pick. Like I'll just tell what both of them are and why I like them for different reasons. Um, that I did a couple months ago and I really like the eye exam I did a couple months ago and the reason is I really like took the time and like research like cranial nerve exams and I printed out like college level like pdf files of what going through a cranial nerve exam is like and it was really cool to like really figure out like you know beyond like the optic nerve and beyond like the uh olfactory nerve like what other senses and what other like nerves that an actual legitimate exam and then I did the same kind of thing for the eye exam except I looked into like left right up down side to side why they test with certain lights on and whatnot and what the doctors are looking for in uh, so I really like those two that I did medical exams are so fun though yeah man I'm not gonna be smart enough to be a doctor so I could pretend to be one on the internet <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sort of like the opposite when it comes to mm -hmm. the medical role plays. I'm like I'm like no, and I'm also like super critical because <laughs> I am a cripple, so I am in the hospital a lot. So 
<laughs> for you it's like a oh god i don't want to be back yeah it's like it's like oh god i don't want to be back and also oh god that you just broke like a thousand hippo laws like <laughs> <laughs> osha's coming for your ass <laughs> like <laughs> like you just broke so many rules <laughs> that attire is inappropriate you didn't wash your hands after changing gloves <laughs> yeah like all of that stuff that like I, I know uh, just from going to the doctor like cause I gotta go to the doctor like every month um, um. so things like that but I love, I love sort of like out of this like world type role plays where it's like, hey, you're on like a spaceship and ah. like, uh, like that one lady who did like the departure thing. Allie, Allie ASMR requests. Yeah. She's one of the emojis. He is. I I love that video. I still go back to it. And that's the thing is there's so many videos nowadays that are in style and nothing does it like that one. I don't know what it is. I think it was because it was the first. I think so too. Like, like nowadays there are so many, you know, there's, there's so much good stuff and there's so much stuff that like GB has done and and, and stuff with like the green screen and, and all of that, right? But those early days and then, you know, Ali comes out with that video and it's like, what in the world is happening? Oh, and it was one, it was like we said the first, but like even then, like, I feel like, no, I don't even feel like Heather was using like a green screen at that point. Like, I feel like she was still using like a normal backdrop, like a, just like a white wall. Yeah. So cool that Allie was able to really like pioneer that. Like, this is what I'm gonna do. You guys can totally follow, but I'm gonna be the first at it. Yeah, it was fire. It is. Oh. And I, I miss, I miss like the he the the Heather Feather videos where it would be like a blanket fort. You know? Dude, one of my favorite videos that I ever did was like that. Yeah, I love blanket fort videos. Um, like the I have one where it's a sheet. Word. I I need to I need to I need to see that because like the blanket fort videos were so nice because because people would take the yeti right and then they would put it in there and then like you could just they they would feel all around like the the and then oh it was so good you, you knew, the og days were fun you, you knew kids out there you, you you gotta get up on it man yeah, you didn't know the struggles <laughs> It's, it was so much, it was so different. Um, iPhone only had like five gigs of data. <laughs> so about a five minute video could be filmed on that damn thing. Five minute ASMR. Can you imagine that today? Like a five minute video? Do, you know, I do like those like quick ASMR videos where they're like, uh, like a, to fall asleep. Cause it's like, oh, I gotta fall asleep. They only have five minutes. <laughs> you had to like you had to you had to make like a playlist back in the day right you had to do like i'm gonna watch this one and then this one and then this one <laughs> ah and that would be 45 minutes because again memory cards and cell phones didn't have that much space <laughs> yeah the standard is like 20 plus minutes like i i hate uploading videos that aren't more than 20 minutes because i'm like Ugh, i can't fall asleep in under 20 minutes I can't either. I have the worst luck falling asleep. Uh, just obviously, I listen to ASMR, but like. <laughs> um, so um, y you're a bit like Houdini. Uh, yes. In 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 that you disappear a lot. Uh, <laughs> for why? <laughs> I'm sorry, my thing totally cut out. I heard like just the word four. Oh, um, I said you're a bit like Houdini in yes. that you disappear a lot. So why stop leaving us? 
Oh, I'm going to be honest. And like, we're going to get real here. Like, I, again, I started my channel when I was 17. So I was like, I, I grew up on YouTube is how I consider it. Like I look at my older videos and I'm like, that is an actual child who had not been through anything. And then there's me right now who I'm like, Oh, that girl's seen some shit. And the reason why I always like dipped is it's like, I was going through these like periods of like, or like that like oh I just turned 21 so I have to go out all the time and like I didn't have like a work life balance and like a YouTube balance so I always pushed YouTube aside because I was like it'll always be there and that that those breaks definitely caused some stagnant like num like my numbers don't grow anymore and for a while i thought i killed my channel because i wasn't seeing any growth even when i started uploading regularly and i'm guessing i just wasn't in like the algorithm and the seo couldn't like quite figure out what i was and who i am and then once i started uploading like weekly i kind of got back into it so i feel like thing going and i can't let this opportunity up again because if i do then i'm my channel is actually gonna die <laughs> yes queen <laughs> yeah like it was a lot of that like self-discovery and like that like post teenage pre-adult like who the fuck am i and trying to figure it all out we've all been there to work. yeah while trying to work while trying to like you know figure it all out and having a youtube channel and i was just like nah <laughs> yeah man so we have some we have some fan questions right i have to get to these because they are very important and i got i have to scroll down for these uh because there are a lot because you are an og queen sure. <laughs> um okay first question this comes from Sleeping Way ASMR, who is a lovely smaller creator. You should definitely check her out. Um, what is one thing you can't live without? And then she puts the little smirky emote. So I actually saw this one on Twitter and I was like, water, oxygen, like the obvious ones. But if I had to like be real about it, um, I don't know. I, I, I you know, like my boyfriend because that seems cheesy it, you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna double down i'm gonna double down and go with my boyfriend because he's the reason why i started making asmr videos again and like for real for real you went back to it because of the boy did oh, i did i don't i doubled down <laughs> you're like you're like i'm gonna give this another shot well, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, God, I'm like, that's like the worst answer. Like, my boyfriend, you know, I wouldn't be here without him. But I'm like, well, I technically wouldn't be having this conversation with you at this very moment if he wasn't like, go make YouTube videos again. Do go be free. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing, though. That and I and we are a better community for it. So let's all thank him. Um, Famcam, we all know Famcam. By the way, he just got the world record on your uh, on your level. I know. I watched it. It was awesome. Okay, shut, shut up, shut, shut up. I did it. I might have got the world record. Chris, behave. Leave my wife alone. Okay, did I do it? Did I do it? I did it, y'all! I got the world record! I gotta make more Mario Maker levels for him, and this time I gotta make them, like, tricky-dicky. Oh, dude, you gotta make it, like, super difficult, and then you gotta <laughs> add, like, things to where he has to, like... Oh, checkpoints. <laughs> yeah, and, like, hot sauce challenge. Because he loves like hot things, right? <laughs> Every time he dies, he has to take like a like a different hot sauce. Yes, Keith. I hope you're paying attention. 
we gotta start like we gotta start like low ball we gotta go like you know like tabasco and then we gotta go like frank's red hot and then we gotta go up the scoville scale and just like destroy him so he's like i can't die anymore exactly just absolutely <laughs> torture. Um, and he would like to know what was the first video game you ever played, and when are uh, oh, what are some of your fondest memories of it? He put when it's what. <laughs> uh, so the first video game I ever remember playing was Super Mario 3 uh, no false Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo game the game is incredible i so my mom had a super nintendo and um my parents are super young my mom and dad got married really young and my mom was she was 22 when i was three so i remember being three years old her sitting me on her bed and was like here you go here's a controller this is how you play and i remember playing like world one like level one of mario where you get the yoshi and you got to go through charge and chuck and you got to go through monty mole and i have no idea what happened after that but i remember remember her handing me the controller and going through that level that is amazing and ever since that it's that's like my favorite game like that is that is my favorite game and and ever since then you've been a nerd <laughs> pretty much i came out the womb a nerd let's be honest but uh, well then you are on the right show um, <laughs> ghostly audios who is my asmr daughter uh she writes, what is your favorite ASMR to record? Mm. I like role plays, but they're not my favorite. I just like a normal like ASMR trigger session. Like um, various triggers, say like, you know, 10 to 15 or something like that. And just sitting down for like an hour and just like going up to the mic and tapping on things and seeing what sounds really cool. And then being like, oh no, that's too harsh. And like moving away, like... I don't know if it's like the way my brain works and that's why I like it, but I just really like like trying to see how other things can sound for an extended period of time. And it's they're so fun to film and they're also my favorite to watch. Yeah. So acute world building and buddies. They're right. When did you first get into gaming? We already covered that. Um, <laughs> little baby. Little three-year-old. Little, little three-year-old Caitlin was in there doing things. Um, he also writes, I find video games pretty difficult to adapt to myself. What is the spark that leads your excitement? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. Um, I definitely think just the curiosity of like what's going to come next. Um, and the mystery behind video games and modes and like campaigns so much is because you never know what's going to happen it's like with a movie you can figure out good guy bad guy okay they're gonna fight got it with a video game it's like you have to go through protagonist story you might have to deal with the antagonist story also but you get to play through it it's not filmed it's not actors acting it it's you experiencing experiencing it and that's what i love so much and i, I definitely love games where there's like multiple endings because you're like wait but if i was like evil ending but if i'm a saint then i get like a saintly pure ending like <gasps> I want to do both and then there's 15 different endings and you're like well there goes my life there goes the rest of my days <laughs> that's like mass effect you get like so many different endings ah. um yeah man uh so uh the next one i think you already know where we're going with it uh has to do with animal crossing Mike, Mike, you're going to kill me. I was, when I read that, I was getting out of my therapy appointment and I was walking to my car and I saw it and I was like, oh God. And I like did like an audible, like, I have no idea how to do this. And I drove the next 15 minutes of my life home, making little animal crossing noises, practicing for this. <laughs> Professional. Um... He writes, please ask her to do an impression of the way they talk in Animal Crossing. 
It's less of a question, more of a funny thing. <laughs> how about you? How about you ask me something? Like, how are you doing today? And I will respond. We'll do like a role play kind of thing. All right. Oh my God, I'm doing a role play with ASMR kitten. What is life? All right. Uh, how are you today? Why am I talking in an accent? I'll do it anyways. Let's go with it. How are you doing today? <laughs> A word? That's cool. So, like, what did you do today, man? The weather's kind of cool. What do you think about the weather? <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to be professional. It's so difficult. <laughs> that's super cool man hey let's go to cookout because that's they got they got watermelon shakes right now and i hear that they're fire yeah and scene oh gosh <laughs> doing that i don't know why <laughs> That was so fire. That was just the greatest thing that we have ever done in the history of PDNS. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have been a part of an Animal Crossing bit. <laughs> that's, my that's my other favorite game. Yes, and with that in mind, guys, here's a commercial for my merch right there. Boom. Oh my God, wasn't that such a great commercial? Wow. Oh. Whoa, it's, it's got stuff on there. And we've also got new stuff. We've got a whole new, like, designs. Why didn't I think of the word designs? Wow, my brain is out of it today. Um, yeah, there's new designs, new everything. Make sure you check those things out. We had to get that in there. Um, but yeah, um, so listen, Caitlin, you are the queen. I hope you know this. Um, like I like I told you before, um, when my aunt passed, I there were very few artists that I watched. Like I, I don't want to say religiously because I feel like that's fucking weird. Um, but I watched you a lot, and um, that was like, I promise you that was the darkest time of my life, and I would not have gotten through it had it not been for people like you, and I owe oh, the fact that I am like, not dead right now, uh, oh, to people like you, and uh, thank you so much for that. Honestly, and thank you so much for coming on my little stupid podcast that is hardly seen by anybody. Oh, stop! <laughs> we, what did we just discuss? What did we just talk about? It, it, it really does mean the world to me that you would even consider coming on this thing. Oh, it was an honor. I appreciate you like even asking me. So thank you, um, guys. Here's what you're going to do. I'm going to tell you to subscribe to ASMR Kitten, but you already fucking are. Um, I'm going to tell you to go to her her Twitch. I can get it. I just keep sliding off. Okay. Whoa. Nah. <laughs> Today I learned. What the fuck am I supposed to do about that Goomba? <laughs> He's so mean. You can outrun him, I promise. Okay, I trust you. Come on. Look 
Excuse me? Excuse me, sir, what was that? I'm so tilted. Everything is tilt. Everything is terrible. Because that's super duper important. And if you want to see another side of Caitlyn, where she's not like, hey, go to sleep, um, you should definitely do that. And uh, I, I think it'll be super duper fun. I'm definitely going to get all my friends to raid her. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, so definitely do that. Um, links will be down below. Where can the people find you on <laughs> social media? At ASMR Kitten across the board, with the exception of Twitch, which is Miss M I S S Caitlin C A I T L I N. Branding, you guys. She has got the branding down. Nailed it. IG, Twitter, YouTube, everything the same. And guys, if you want to follow me on the Twitter, all you got to do is go at Chris Not Walking right there, you know. What's your bound hound with the crown? You know, it's me. Um, and yeah, is there anything you want to ask me before we wrap it up? I don't think so. I wasn't expecting that question, so I'm not prepared for the class. She is not prepared to ask the cripple any questions. So, <laughs> with that in mind, uh, I, I thank you again. Like I, I said before, I, I briefly touched on it, but um, if it weren't for people like you, uh, I, I don't know where I would be. You, you, oh, guy, thank you. Helped me so much in the darkest of times and i'd really do appreciate it guys go subscribe to asmr kitten she is the dopest she is the queen she is the og god uh my name is christopher not walking this is the dirty nerdy show that was asmr kitten and we will see you in the next one when you get into the 20s that's when it gets hard that's when it gets super difficult i'm gonna say difficult because, you know. This bitch wants to fucking play games. I'm not doing this. She thinks it's fucking funny. Fuck off, Keith. You know what I mean? Yeah. We's out of here. Bye.